Well, I believe that banking institutions are more dangerous to our liberties than standing armies. Now, who said that? It was Thomas Jefferson, US President, between 1801 and 1809, which only goes to show that the only surprising thing about the latest financial crash crisis was that anybody finds it surprising. It tends to be a bit of a feature of history. So how have people dealt with it previously? Well, in 1360, the city of Barcelona uh, decided to execute in front of his failed bank, a banker who uh, managed to lose all their money, but I'm not suggesting that necessarily is the right response to this crisis. But I guess the question is, what are banks supposed to do? What, what is it supposed to look like? Well, at NEF, we, we, uh, we define this as being, and this is the only technical bit you're going to get from me this evening, that it's the allocation of capital over space and over time to ecologically sustainable activities that create long-term social and financial value. Now, does anybody uh, in this room think that's what they've been doing? No takers. Well, let's try and work out why. And the first thing I want to sort of go into is why I think banks make too much money. Now, that might seem an odd thing to say. Surely it's a good thing for institutions, private companies, to make money. Well, normally, yes. But the thing is, banks are not wealth creators in the way that they always claim to be. They are merely middlemen. Their job is to transfer money from A to B and to do it well. And of course, it's a really important function for the economy and for society. But there are loads of other jobs that are really important functions. So the, more, the bigger slice they're taking for doing that, the less well off business and society becomes. And so it's a bit curious that banks increasingly over the last 20 to 40 years in particular have made more and more money. They used to get along with a mere 6, to 7, 6 or 7 percent return on their capital. Um, that, since the great deregulation that started in the 70s, went up to 15 percent. And just before the crash, it had gone up to 20 percent. Banks just can't make that much money because it's you and I that is paying for that, and it's unsustainable. And they, they justify this by saying that they're risk takers. Well, not in the ordinary sense of the word of business. Entrepreneurs take risks and they get a reward, but they take risks with their own money. Bankers take risks with other people's money. There's another group of people in the economy that, that look after other people's money and spend it. They're called civil servants. But these are apparently the enemies of enterprise, whereas bankers create wealth. Well, I would say that actually, you know, bankers are largely more comparable to civil servants and perhaps they should be paid the same. It's more of a bureaucracy than an entrepreneur society in banking. And just to give some illustrations of this, what have banks actually been doing over the last sort of 10 years in particular, in the last 20? The last 10 years in particular, they've been creating imaginary wealth. They call these derivatives. And at the moment, they stand, the notional value of all outstanding derivatives, according to the um, Bank of International Settlements, is $580 trillion. That's 10 times world GDP. So I thought it would be quite interesting to find out what these numbers will be when I retire at the age of 76. Because that's probably when I'm likely to actually be able to retire. <laughs> um, and uh, using the same projection of growth rates over the last 12 years, um, projecting the exponential growth, that might sound like a silly thing to do, but actually virtually all financial assets are valued on this basis. Um, I worked out that the uh, outstanding value of derivatives when I retire will be 298 quadrillion. That's a real number. That's 15 noughts. Or you can call that about a quarter of a quintillion if you don't want to be too fussy about it. And that will be a thousand times global GDP. But obviously that doesn't sound very feasible. I also ran the, the, uh, the pay of Barclays chief executive through, through this model and discovered that um, Although only, I paid a mere £1.3 million in 1998, uh, Bob Diamond got 6.5 last year, by 2046 he should be earning about a billion pounds a year. Well worth it, I'm sure you'd agree. Incidentally, in 1999, Martin Slater MP said, on hearing of this £1.3 million pay packet, a triumph of greed over customer interest. Barclays are in the last chance saloon. Well, they've been drinking in there for 12 years, which is not bad going. So why do bankers get paid so much? A question I'm often uh, asked. So, I mean, I, I tend to say to them, well, what you really need to understand is that a senior banker really is 20 times cleverer than a doctor or a headmaster. <laughs> they really, really do work, you know, one of those Goldman Sachs five that earned $43 million between them last year, 
they really are 400 times more worthwhile than a midwife. Really? No, actually, I don't say that. I don't say that to people. What I say is, no, what it's all about is simple as this. If you take a, human, a, 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 a ginormous amount of money and you shove it through your business and you take a very, very tiny slice off the end of it, that will still itself be a very large sum of money. And that's why bankers are paid so much. Now, I think maybe we can take a lesson from that and maybe what we need to do is the vast quantities of money flowing in the financial system, maybe we just need to take a very small slice of that and do something a bit more useful with it. And maybe, you know, fund some public services, maybe sort of pay for a few more midwives. Um, and maybe then we wouldn't be in the state of affairs where um, another US president, famously when he had a bunch of bankers came to see him after a banking crisis, said to them this, and I'm just going to squeeze this in for the bell. You are a den of vipers and thieves. I intend to rout you out, and by the eternal God, I will rout you out. Now, look at David Cameron saying that. How extraordinary. Exactly on time. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody incredible.